What is up guys, welcome back to our Digimon Let's Play here on the channel. We are here today inside the Aguino Wasteland and close to the Palace of Thorns. However, that is not where we're going to be going today. At the end and start of last episode, I talked about showing you guys a brand new area of the map. S to some of you guys, this won't be a massive reveal, you know, if you've played the game before, as I keep saying, you guys won't be excited. Or maybe you will be, I don't know. There's a brand new area up ahead regardless, and we are going to do some digging around. Um, Rika and Hamari are waiting for us there, so there will be some sort of cutscene action, there will be some sort of progression of the story, but after that, I'm pretty sure that we will be free to have a rummage around and have a look inside the depths of our new area, which I will show you guys in just a second. Here we go. Alright fam, it looks like uh, Joe on the left here is pretty calm, whereas Sam on the right is pretty unrelaxed. Let's find out what awaits us here in the west coast of Faulty X Machina. So here we go. This area is very kind of, uh, well, it's very exciting. Uh, and there's a couple of things to point out. First of all, it seems like the Blackosaurus crew are waiting for us yet again. S but this time they are slightly stronger than they were the last time. As you can see, both have Digivolved. This is the same Agamon and Gabamon that we fought against in Mod Cape not too long ago. In fact, it was probably um, two episodes ago at this point. So these guys are here waiting for us again and we can choose to fight them if we want to. Now, inside Fault AX Machina, you guys will see that there's a bunch of stuff going on. For one thing, it is fucking massive, okay? In terms of, like, the areas that we can explore, it's pretty big as well. So, in terms of its grandeur and its scale, it's obviously quite exciting. This is very reminiscent and the almost the remodel, if you like, of a uh, Factorial Town from Digimon World 1. So, if you were a fan of Factorial Town, then you might like this area as well. Obviously, they're not identical or anything. They are two completely different places, but there is obviously inspiration transferred across here. Uh, and it's pretty exciting. So, once we come in here, we have a little bathroom, which helps. And we also have a vending machine. Now, when these guys aren't waiting here, um, you know, well, in fact, Blackasaurus and stuff don't matter too much. But, um, actually, let's buy a couple of bandages, just on the off chance that we need those. Because we don't have any of those. So yeah, Blackasaurus and, and his friend, um, whatever this guy is called, I forget, I um, can't remember. But when these guys are, these guys will chill here until we basically visit them. And they won't they won't change the, the dynamic of any of the other Digimon that spawn. However, because Rika and Hamari are waiting for us just up ahead. I mean, I think you guys might have clocked them already. They're just in the distance there. When those guys aren't there, other Digimon will spawn in this area and you will have to dodge them when you run past because I'm pretty sure it is a group of um, Hagurumon or Solarmon, I don't know which, but um, you know the little clockwork guys, they stand here, they are very very strong and if you are coming into here for the first time and you don't understand what's going on or your Digimon are maybe at like champion level or ultimate and you've just battled your way through, I'm gonna, <laughs> oh, there we go, Whew. Um, if you have just battled your way through the Aguino Wastelands and you're kind of beat up but you want to keep exploring, you can come in here and you can get a fright. Now this large patch of grass here that looks kind of empty and that nothing's here, I'm going to sneeze again. Okay, there we go, baby. I'm ready to go. Okay, good start. This area here is actually the spawn point of yet another King Digimon. We have banged in a few of those at this point in the series and another one spawns here. So uh, watch out for that guy because he will charge you as well if you're not careful. So... We can keep um, harvesting all these materials. In fact, let's just harvest this tree, seeing as we're here for the first time. A lot of these materials in the further away biomes, which I've, I think I've said this before, but um, if you go further afield, normally the, the resources you pick up in these trees are like quite rare compared to everywhere else. So it usually, it, it usually makes sense to grab it while you can, because once your Digimon like fall out of Mega back to Rookie and Champion and whatnot, <laughs> excuse me, then you won't be able to come back here until you have strong Digimon again. But anyways, let's talk to these two. Or is it just this one? We never expected this. So it looks like Rika's here by herself. Um, maybe this is our chance to make a move on her and ask her for her phone number or something like that. I don't know. I'm digging the helmet um, and the rest of the outfit, obviously. 
Anyways, uh, enough of me being a weird perv. Jack's going to talk to Rika and ask her what the hell's going on because Hamari should be with her, but she's not. What's going on here? Apparently, Rika asks, who's there? I don't know why she can't see us. Oh, it's you, Wolfie. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Although, in saying that, she does have a, a metal helmet or whatever that is covering up her face. So, anyways, my partner, Hamari, she... I went after her, but she said, don't come near me, and then she ran off. So it looks like Hamari's still in the huff. If you guys forgot about that, I think Hamari was kind of, she ran out on the rest of the crew earlier on. I think she was getting a bit stressed out about not being able to go home and stuff. She should be around here somewhere. I'd be very grateful if you could help me find her. So obviously we're going to say yes to this because we can't say no, is, is the straightforward answer. But obviously we kind of care about Rika and Hamari to a certain degree. I mean, most of the time they piss us off and get on our tits, but... It is what it is. Thank you, says Rika. And off she goes. Now, if this was me, I would totally be like, yo, Rika, you are a strong, powerful Digimon. You are an ultimate Digimon. Why don't you just stick with us and help us explore this area together? No? Would that would that not make too much sense? So, um, if we have a look, I don't think we've been given any Digimail, which is pretty, um, pretty interesting. I went to the north of the Palace of Thorns and it, um, it was after the desert. So, basically, that was Rika's message telling us to come here. So... Let's have a little exploration of all AX Machina. Now, this area is full of very powerful machine and metal and clanky and all that good stuff. Digimon, I mean, here, what have we got? <laughs> a couple of things. So, there's Toy Agamon Black Level 37. They're kind of scared of us, which is probably a good thing. Um, and then over here, we've got more Toy Agamon running about by themselves. Kind of weird. They, these guys are a lot split up compared to this little cluster who are quite tight. We also have a Metal Mamimon here who, of course, we are going to speak to and find out what he's saying to it. Mel Mamimon, don't talk to me. I don't know who you are, but you're gonna get hurt. And just like that, he uh, he he basically doesn't do anything else. Oh, we've got another little secret harvest point. So Metal Mamimon again, one of these strong Digimon. We can't really interact with him just yet. We need more prosperity. We need to interact with Fault X Machina a little bit more. We need to basically do more stuff. So he's not gonna. Um, we're not gonna basically talk to him just now. We're gonna run past him and come back to him later. Now this area is quite cool. I kind of like. Uh, the kind of this is like the last kind of grassy bits you'll see. I mean, there's a bit, a bit through here as well where it's kind of grassy and stuff. But very soon the whole place will become pure concrete. Um, I can't see what I'm doing because there's grass in the way, but I think this is correct. There we go. So we feed these guys, make sure they're happy. I'm dropping frames like mad in this area right now, guys. I don't know why, but anyways, we're moving on to the flower bed island. So again. If we didn't have our Megas, we would probably have to fight our way through most of this stuff. But because uh, because our guys are pretty badass, badass and buff, we don't really have to, to worry about that. So let's have a look at this. We've got a couple of things here. We've got a Gardramon. So we're going to talk to this guy. And then our checkpoint for our quest is waiting just around the corner of the flower bed there. So anyways, Gardramon is uh, tripping out right now. He says he can't move and um, he needs help. My waist sprocket number three has failed and now I cannot walk. Titan, Titan, my important part was broken and now I cannot move. Thus, I am in need of a certain part for my rep my repair. Okay, so... I require a Haguru gear for my repair. Hagurumon is in the um, possession of said part. Hagurumon is in the control room of OX Machina and I have an urgent task as well. Please hurry back. So, that um, that's basically clears up that task. Let's walk around here. I'm still... Oh my god. I don't know if you guys can see it, so I'll try not to complain because sometimes when I watch... Um, I watch through the Let's Plays and the guy who's playing or the girl who's playing talks about dropping frames and when I'm watching on YouTube I can't see it so I'll try and shut my face but uh, it is kind of weird like I don't know why this keeps happening um, but anyways god bless Digimon um, let's walk through here and kind of have a look around this area before we chit chat because our friends are over there it looks like Hamari and Rika have met up with each other so we're definitely going to interact with them and look at this guys this is kind of interesting. So along here, we have a path that obviously le leads directly into this abyss. Now, this time around, there isn't any um, invisible bridges or anything like that for us to cross. But this is a kind of a hint that later on, um, we may have access to more areas than at first we can see here in Fault AX Machina. There will be a couple of things going on that will change the dynamic of the area. I mean, this one over here, even though there's not a bridge, can we actually travel across this? I'm not entirely sure. No, we can't. So down there we can see that there is actually a level that will come up and, and join us across to that part of the map. But for now it's um, it's not working. So let's go across and speak to these guys. We'll find out if Hamari's still being a bit crazy. Himari! <laughs> Did I tell you not to come near me, says Himari? So she's still being a total flipping knob. Um, Rika, what's that stuff coming out? Wait, don't tell me. 
Wait a minute. So Rika, because Amari's not been with her for a few days, she's forgotten that she needs to shower frequently. And though, and so there is a weird, nauseous smell coming from her. You sound so... Rika, are you alright? Something's wrong, says Rika. So Rika's gone about do Lally just now because she's been separated, I guess, from Hamari. I'm just, I'm just fine, same as always. Who's calling me Hamari? So Rika is totally out of it at this point, even though she's standing right in front of her. A minute ago, she couldn't see. She was looking for Hamari. She's, she finds her, but she's, she's still in this kind of weird state. Things are getting worse by the looks of things. It's me. I'm your partner. So Hamari is starting to come to her senses a little bit. Wouldn't be so mean to me, Rika. Rika's gone tits mental right now. Wolfie, what do we do? It looks like her form is altering. Right, quick, slap her in the face. Knock her out of it. Is is it my fault for pushing her away? I think that, that that's probably what's going on here, Hamani. Rika, if we can't save her, she's going to turn into a machine dramon. I really don't want that to happen. So if we could do anything, are we going to have to battle? What on earth was that? Oh... So I think what happened there was we tried to use the device that Mamio gave us to try and stop the process of the transformation, but it looks like we still have to fight her. Luckily, we don't have to fight against Machine Dramon, but we'll find out how strong Rika is, because honestly, I can't remember. She's level 26. She is an ultimate Dingimon in uh, Angie Woman, I believe. Uh, so we'll find out how strong and powerful she is going to be. I'm pretty sure she... Uh, maybe she's... Uh, oh, fuck knows. I can't even remember, guys. But um, we're going to we're gonna try and put her... Uh, put our foot up our butt regardless so let's say uh, do a little bit less talking i don't think we're going to need to exe for this fight i don't know if rika uses an ultimate ability on us she probably doesn't so what we're going to do is probably just try and hit her with a wombo combo which we can now do so we will do that we'll save her exe in case we get into a trickier fight later on but it looks like right now even though she's buffed her defense and she's taken very little damage to our energy attacks we should do a lot of damage here with our double limit break i'm hoping we do anyway so here we go, Spiral Masquerade and the Ice Wolf Claw double attack. Let's see how much damage this does. So it takes her down to just below half, which isn't too bad. Um, Crusader Mon goes flying off to the left there and completely misses her Buster Drive, which is kind of annoying because I uh, I just told these guys to fucking, you know, combo. I was trying to catch Rika on her way down from the uh, from the attack, but anyways, that was a weird move. I don't know what, what abilities Rika has in this fight, so whatever she's using right now... We will um, we'll have a look at later. Maybe we can pick up some moves for this fight. I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. I'm going to top up these guys' MP a little bit. And then probably keep an eye on Crusader Mon's attacks. Because she might be able to get a limit break off. Although in saying that, it looks like she's... Oh, there we go. That was another squ <laughs> another squint uh, buster dive. I mean, she's going ham now, which is fucking excellent. But I'm pretty sure Rika's dead at this point. One more should do the trick. In fact, if I just tell another Buster Dive to go off here, we should finish her off in no time at all. And there we go. We knock Rika flat on her ass, which is honestly a shame because she is a very good-looking Digimon. Very powerful Digimon. But for now, we are just a little bit stronger. So, we get 5k for this fight, which is good because that is roughly how much I spent um, flying to the Aguino Wastelands. I did that off-screen before I chatted to you guys. I collected the money. I meant to say this at the start of the episode, but I ran around, collected the meat and stuff so that we had resources for this journey and deposited a bunch of shit that we didn't need in the bank so then i flew to the aguino wastelands and it was just when we crossed the bridge that i spoke to you guys but anyways enough of that nonsense we will take all of our stats all of our money and be content with that we are apparently we learned attack skill flash as well which obviously we're not too sad about pretty cool so let's see it looks like we did actually stop the transformation um of rika and hamari here I'm sorry, Rika. It's all my fault. So, Amari is kind of calming down a little bit. She's going to try and uh, stop being a, a doofus from now on, I guess. I wanted to go back home. I was worried about my sisters, and so I got angry and took it out on you. You have sisters? So, you can start to see the, the kind of the flaws in the relationship between these guys and their Digimon. They don't really communicate properly to each other. They obviously, Amari hasn't conveyed all about her, her normal life to uh, Rika here, which would probably have been a good idea, you know, if she'd maybe said to her, listen... I have a whole family and a network of friends and my whole life is back home, blah de blah de blah Maybe they would be on a, on the same wavelength, but it's taken until now for that to happen. I got so worried thinking about how hungry they must be, but you're important too, Rika. I just can't abandon this world. I wanted to fix things here and zip back to the real world as fast as I could, but things just got worse and worse, so I went and took out on you. I've been I've been awful. Yeah, I mean yeah, you kind of you've been a bit of an asswipe to be honest, um, Hamari, but, you know, as long as it doesn't happen again. Between you and Kota, Kota, you know, we like you a little bit more than Kota, but still, at least you're useful at this point in time. 
Um, but yeah, at least Kota doesn't flip out on us half the half the time. He just runs in and fucking dies all the time. Right, you used some program on me, didn't you? That's right, Wolfie. You did something just before Rika attacked. Well, yeah, we chucked the, the Mamio disc at you. I guess we are explaining this too hard just now. Yeah, the prototype antivirus program. There we go. Which means Rika can start changing at any time. What what are you talking about, dummy? So Rika asks, is it, is it scary the fact that I might turn into a machine drum on? You know, when you're sitting on the toilet or when you're in, in your, when you're sleeping or whatever, I might just turn around and be a machine drum on suddenly. I mean, that's kind of creepy. But Hamari says, nah, what are you talking about? I couldn't be scared of you. You're my partner and I care about you. Okay, so we have this little escapade over and done with by the looks of things. I don't know what happens from this point. Are we going to get Zap back to the city? Oh, no. Interesting. So it looks like now Rika is going to digivolve. Obviously, it has taken this emotional bond for the uh, the development to occur. And now Rika goes into her mega form. Looking very, very badass. Let's have a look and see. Look how big she is now. How sick is that? <laughs> a flying pink dragon dog thing. Did you digivolve? Yes, I think so. My body, it feels full of power, says Rika. With this much strength, I can be the one to protect you from now on. Someone's pre feeling pretty bold, says Hamari. But thank you, I know I can count on you now. And just like that, Talmon's opened the gate for us. So I guess if we want, we don't have to travel all the way back. Uh, are we going to get the opportunity to choose this or are we going to just get sucked straight through? Thanks so much for everything, Wolfie. I'm so grateful. I want to stay near you for the rest of my life. Um, okay, that's uh, interesting. Thanks for that, Hamari. Kind of creepy, but, you know, we'll go with it. Cool. So, Tamer level went up and we also have the option to teleport through. Now, there's a couple of things we need to talk about real quick, guys, to have a look at some of this stuff. So, um, first of all, Rika, we've done all that shit, but now Mamio's actually sent us a mail, and he says, how's it going over there? I want to tell you something. Something is up with Kota, for fuck's sake. If, <laughs> it's like juggling children, you know? It's like looking after kids. We've also, we've got our digis back here that we need to look after, but then fucking Rika and Kota can't do shit. Well, not Rika, but, you know, Rika's fine. It's Hamari that's the problem. Um, something is up with Kota. Honestly, I can't handle it. I'm waiting for you at Mod Cape. Come as quickly as you can. So, we are the kings of Mod Cape at this point, after the last few episodes, so we shouldn't have to worry about wandering through there. So yeah, a couple of things to point out guys is this looks like up until now we have hit a dead end in 48X Machina. There is no other areas for us to explore just now, but this is obviously not the end. There is so much more to this area than meets the eye. I think what's happening here is the game is kind of giving us like a like a stopping point, like a barrier almost, in which you can't travel into like this further area because if you were to wander in here straight from the Aguino Wastelands having not played the game, you would have got a surprise as to what's waiting for you because through there is the other part. Now, that is not to say that right now in this point in time we can't get to the rest of 40X Machina because we can, we've just chosen not to, okay? And um, there is another way into 40X Machina from a different part of the world which you guys are familiar with which I showed you, but we didn't actually jump across it at this point in time. So, luckily, we are going to we are going back to Mod Cape. I don't think there is much else for us to do at this point in this area. So, why don't we just head along there right now and find out what the rest of the guys are doing? So, if we travel outside, and because I was thinking if there was anything else for us to do in the in that area just now, but I don't think there is. So. Why don't we just directly travel to Mod Cape and catch up with Mamio and Co? Now, we probably should top up on our... Oh, wait a minute. I've just changed my mind about something. I've had a, I've had a thought, guys. Right, here's something that we're going to do first. Because if we're going to Mod Cape, right, there's a couple of Digimon that are waiting to be interacted with there. So why don't we do this first? Now, this is going to cost us a lot of... Uh, of that Digi Skrilla, but, you know, it's going to be worth... We're going to stop very, very quickly in the Logic Volcano. And we're going to speak to this little guy... Because one of our guys in Mod Cape is wanting to interact with this dude. And in order for us to proc that when we go to Mod Cape, we need to speak to him first. So, let's do this. Gumdramon, board, board, board. Maybe I should head back. Hmm, on second thought. Whoa, who the heck are you? Don't tell me you heard just now. I've got no nothing to tell you. And obviously, he's going to show us his tour of Logic Volcano, which he's done before. But at the same time, he's also going to catch himself right now, I think. Listen, buddy, if you're having any doubts about your strength, you better not venture too far in. And then he says this, which we never received the last time we spoke to this little dude. Wait, am I getting ahead of myself? You got something you want to say? Uh, obviously, we are going to tell him about Zudamon. You know, the big shell Digimon with the hammers? He's waiting in Mod Cape, and he's looking for Gumdramon. So, yeah, that's my master. Even though it was my bad See, The other day, he made a fat stack of pancakes. I suggested using my tail instead of a griddle. Uh, don't use your work. Uh, tools to cook dummy he says so I guess he got 
he got pissed off. He just told us that straight up. He got pissed and he, and he wanted to go home. I wonder if he still thinks of me as a pupil. All right. These Digimon fall out over the most stupid ass shit I've ever seen. And that's all we really need to do in Logic Volcano. So it was an expensive uh, trip in all honesty. But, you know, I think it's going to be worth because... Zudomon, who we need to now speak to in Mod Cape, he's in quite a an awkward area. So we're now going to be told that Gumdramon has went to the builder, um, and that he's good for the DIY nonsense. All right, and awesome. I nearly said insane there, but honestly, Gumdramon is far from being an insane addition to the town. So I don't know. We'll have a look at him later. We can stop in, but right now we're going to go along to Mod Cape and catch up with the rest of the crew. So again, this is burning through a lot of our money. That was like, uh, what was that like six k? 5k I think 3 and 2 was it 3 and 2 or 4 and 2 I don't know but anyways here we are in Mod Cape now luckily our dudes are over here chilling quite close by um, and they've also evacuated the area that's like one of the plus points of when you come into these kind of um, cutscene scenarios all right before we talk to Kota and find out all about his nonsense and what problems he's got let's actually have a look at some of our uh, our MP stuff here because we are actually running low on some of that stuff now our HP is fine medium recoveries will be used probably on Joe We'll just um, top him up a little bit because obviously these guys do kind of run out of MP quite fast in these battles. And I don't know if we're going to be fighting, but it is likely that we will be. So uh, let's talk to these guys as well. So it looks like Kota and Wargrillmon here, Yuki, young Yukimura here, are, uh, are training by the looks of things. One more time, either that or they're practicing their um, professional dance routine that they're taking to the, the finals next week. Exhaust Flame goes off. Come on, you won't get stronger than anybody with efforts like that, so, uh, alright. We have a bit of an instance in which it looks, obviously, judging by the staggered kind of silhouette, or not silhouette, but, you know, the staggered stance of uh, Yukimura here. It looks like Kota's pushing him to his limits in terms of training. I guess these guys do have a past history of failing in battle, and for that point, they've, they've said a couple of times that they want to get stronger and all that jazz. So, uh, yeah. Mamio, they've been here like this since I arrived, training like they're possessed. So, uh, yeah, Mamio was sent us a text message or a, a digi mail or whatever, and he was like, dude, these two are fucking tripping out. I don't know what's happening, and they won't listen to me. So, uh, please, can you help me? We arrive at the scene to obviously kick some people into shape. You can't tell just from, you can tell from just from looking, Yukimura isn't up to this. But even using force, I don't think I could stop them now. I know I'm not setting a great example, but I need to, I need you to ask to put a stop to it. So, I think Mamio wants us to actually come in here and fight these dudes. I don't know. Let's see if we can talk them out of it first. Don't try and stop us, Wolfie. This is Yukimura's and my problem to solve. What's that? What's the matter, Yukimura? You done already? No, not yet. So these guys are absolutely fucked. Kota's in, obviously. He's, like, perfectly fresh. He's not He's not broken a sweat. He's just standing there shooting commands, which is obviously not cool. But um, Yukimura, because of the bond with uh, Kota, I guess, and his desire to please Kota and make him happy and all that stuff, he's just fucking exhausting himself. We decide we do whatever it takes, even if it means altering our form. What do you mean altering our form? Kota, if that's what you want, I'll... Wait a minute. Wait, hold the, hold the bus, hold the bus. What do you mean altering your form? Brace yourself, Yukimura. As long as you don't lose your will, all that power can be yours. So Yukimura's... Uh, <laughs> he's transforming and Kota's actually encouraging this bullshit. So... What are you doing? <laughs> no, I got a curse in a submission. <laughs> oh, Kota, you're such a fanny. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Transformation begins. Obviously, guys, this can't be anything good. Let's find out. Two ultimate digi digivolutions in the one episode. I'm guessing, though, that this one won't be as sensible as the last one with Himari and stuff. Yeah, okay. So Kota goes from champion... Growmon into Skull Greymon, which is a uh, very intimidating. Now we've already fought Skull Greymon in the series, so this guy doesn't necessarily scare us as much. But holy moly, look at this guy! What a beast! That's not Machine Dramon. We throw the device at him again. It pisses off Skull Greymon, but it doesn't seem to have any immediate effects. I guess that just means that it's time to rumble. All right, let's go. Let's find out if this guy's a little bit stronger than Rika. I'm guessing that he will be, but let's have a go. He is level 19, and so far. Well, the battle's just begun, I guess, but we'll find out how much of a punch this guy packs and how much damage we can do back. So we get a, a good power up there, which is pretty good, and so far I don't even know if he's hit us yet, which is kind of weird. We've, we're very close to our limit breaks and EXE. In fact, once I push this, we will have enough. Now again, based on how we're handling this just now, I don't actually think we need to... 
I don't think we need to EXE because our Megas are far too strong for this guy. He's doing zero damage to us. And again, he could pull something out the bag that I am not expecting. But honestly, I don't think it's going to happen. So with that, why don't we just um, we'll wait for Guru Ramon to pop off here. Let him land that. And now I think we'll hit him with the double limit break. Although, did I time that poorly? Yeah, okay. So both our guys are pissed off now, which was my bad. But here we go. Let's hit this, this big skill guy with um, one of our finest Wombos. And see how much DPS we could put down on this dude. So up until this point in the game, guys, you know the difficult the difficulty curve has been like that. Yeah, it's been like very very difficult to fight some of our fights. We have struggled to train. We've struggled to have money because we've been spending so much uh, of our funds on recovery items. All the battles have been extremely extremely hard. Now it looks like actually now that I'm talking that these guys are actually taking a little bit more damage. So why don't we pop over to Garurumon and throw him a large recovery, and then we'll probably throw a large um, medium uh, MP disc at Crusader Mon here as well. Okay, and that should keep us going for a little while longer, although this guy does look like he's um, getting a little bit stronger now, which is interesting. But yeah guys, the difficulty curve, as I said, has been like that, and now it's kind of levelling out. Now that we have our mega form, um, or in our mega forms, the game is becoming a lot more straightforward, and I think a lot of, pe a lot of players fail to get to this stage. It's quite weird that it kind of, like, fluctuates like that, but at the same time, it is what it is. Now, over here, Crusademon, <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at this pose. What is going on here? I probably should be down here so that you guys can see my uh, items and stuff. I apologize. Um, let's use our large double disc because this bitch is a... Uh, Joe's about to... He's about to land right on his chin in this mid kind of front flip thing. I don't know I don't know what the fuck's going on there. So we're going to try and land that before this guy hits us again. Top us up to full and hopefully we will be finishing this guy off. In just a couple of moments, if we could get another uh, limit break off and finish him in style, that would be pretty sick. In order for me to do that, I need to keep an eye on Garurumon's abilities. He should be able to get off here, I think. Okay, I missed it, so it looks like we're not going to be able to anymore. But that being said, maybe we could just do it with Crusadermon. This might not kill him. It might. I don't think it will, though. I'm not sure. We'll find out in just a second, I guess. But yeah, it's another Skull Greymon fight down, which is kind of interesting. Obviously, this was a campaign battle, so we get a good amount of money for it, which is very nice. Um, and we don't get any items, unfortunately, but it is what it is. I wonder if he could teach us any moves. I'm thinking of the moves that he used, and it's probably the ones that we have already, so... Okay. I tell a lie. We pick up Shadowfall from this dude. Nice. Not gonna complain. Alright. Let's catch back up with these dudes. Oh, right, okay. Wolfie. Try using my antivirus program one more time, please, says Mamio. So look at this, guys. It looks like Yukimura's actually went all the way back to his egg form. So he was Skull Greymon, then we defeated him, and he went all the way back. So <laughs> I guess he's reversed backwards through the stages, or he's continued on. I don't know. Either way, when we beat Rika, she didn't turn back to an egg. I guess it's because this guy obviously was in his evil stage with Skull Greymon. He had to be reborn or something to cleanse all of this, this shit or whatever, but who knows. That's it. I wonder if my auto-learning program is doing even better than I thought it would. If it's working this well. So it looks like Mamio's pretty confident in what's going on now. We've got some positive developments for the for a change, which uh, feels good. Just talking to myself. Anyways, we've got other things to worry about. Yukimura, I'm so sorry. So again, we've got this kind of... Uh, this this contra or this balance between you know our characters flipping out their Digimon and then them getting apologetic and realizing what they've done after it. Obviously, this time it's Kota's turn for an understanding, and uh, yeah, I'm the only one who's just nothing. It was the same in the real world too. So Kota's obviously voicing his concern to the rest of the guys here that uh, he feels that he's powerless. He feels like he's the weak one of the group. He can't really do much, and apparently that's the same as when he was in the real world as well, which kind of sucks, but. I'm sure he'll come around. I mean, not to brag or anything, but I did great at school and sports. I could read people pretty well. I'm sure I was the kind of guy people would be jealous of. Okay, that's that's quite a quota thing to say, but anyways. And of course, I appreciated that, but all the same. When I had to actually think about what I wanted to do in life, I realised I was just empty inside. Any, everyone would talk about their dreams and goals, and I'd just try and think of a single thing I really wanted to do. I had this vague picture of how I enjoy myself. Find some job or another, get married something, get older... And just have a pretty average, decent life. That's what, I'll, that's what a lot of us strive for, I think, Kota, to be honest. Suddenly I felt like my footing wasn't stable anymore and I started to panic, thinking I had to find something. And that is when I got summoned to the digital world. Here I finally felt like I was special. I believed there was something only I could do, but it turned out wrong. So I've got a little bit of dialogue here where Kota's kind of being a bit mosh. 
been a bit um, painful in all honesty but Mammy was going to tell him you've got a partner who believes in you you should cherish that and uh, look after it you've got friends who come running to your aid and you still think that you're a nobody all this time you never noticed that you had something that no one had in your hands all along I guess so I'm such an idiot okay so I think with that Kota and Yukimura's egg are going to um, retreat a little bit and I guess we can have the option to jump into the portal as well occupational hazard I guess he was trying too hard um, to put up a good front. As cool as he talked, he still relied on you so much, Wolfie. Hey, wait, don't... <laughs> hey, wait, 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 Mamio. Don't drag us into this, all right? If Kota's flipping out, don't, we don't want to be part of this equation any more than when we come in and save his ass, all right? Don't don't try and tie us to Kota, all right? Because the next time he trips out, you're going to make us responsible for it, all right? I know what you're doing, Mamio. You cunning fox, you. Okay. Not that I want to talk. Hope yeah, you can give me a pass there. You ought to take a rest, too. I have a feeling things are about to get pretty busy. All right, interesting. So, Mamio goes gives us a little clue that things are about to spice. Okay. Wait a minute. Who the fuck is this guy? So, a mysterious voice says just off this from off the side. You can see a shadow, shadowy silhouette there. So, the antivirus program opens up new possibilities for altered Digimon. Fascinating. That's kind of spooky. <laughs> and our main character's like, what the fuck was that noise? Nah. It was probably just the wind telling us that the fucking the antivirus program had uh, spooky side effects. All right, awesome. So if we pop back into Digimon's house, I think that we actually have a mail telling us to go back to Digimon's house. Let's have a look. Come back to town. Yukimura has been lost to the BH program, just like Rika. Thanks to you, Wilfie, there was a happy ending. I want to hold a debriefing. So we have some sort of um, stuff to get onto with Digimon, which is great. But first of all, we are going to go along and chat to Zudamon because we have to acquire his ass for the city. In fact, is he on this part of the ship? Fuck, I can't remember. Is he backwards? I think he might be backwards. Yeah, he's backwards. God damn it, man. All right, I'm going to meet you guys at Zudamon and I will be back in just a second. And then hopefully we can tie up some loose ends that we have sitting um, at the end of this episode, be back in a second. All right, guys, that is us. We are back with the Zudo Meister. He's got a big strawberry behind him, so I'm gonna pick that shit up first of all, and then we can chat to this guy. What's up? What's up, big dude? Oh, yeah, again, it seems like Joe has decided to park his derriere directly in front of the camera, which is just ideal. You told Gumtron I was sorry, huh? So that punk felt bad about the whole thing too, did he? He said he's gonna wait for me in the city. Look at this guy, going that extra mile. I made you two worry too, didn't I, buddy? Well, not I mean, not really. My bad. Master and my apprentice will be... Oh, well, I guess he's talking to... Oh, he's talking to Gumdramon through us. I'm fucking hell. Peace out. And Zudamon joins City. All right, banging. Absolutely fantastical. Now, guys, I was planning on autopiloting back to the city directly after this, but there is some other things that we can do while we are here in Mod Cape. So I am going to nip across to that part of the map and I will catch you guys back in just a little second. I'm sorry for keep tossing you away in that, but honestly, there is a bit of running about to do, so I will get you guys there in just a moment. All right, guys, welcome back. Now, we are on the flagship mod or mod ship of Mod Cape. Is it, or it's just the flagship of Mod Cape? I'm not sure, but... Um, we are about to partake in a little adventure through this doorway, which we have never done before. I know it's extremely dark in this area. It might even be really difficult for you guys to see it, so I apologise for that. But it's just because Mod Cape is naturally fucking dank anyway and kind of dark. So uh, and it's also nighttime. So, anyways, let's move into a more colourful area in the east coast of Faulty X Machina. So again. I never popped in here before the last time we had the opportunity because we had never been to Fault X Machina before. You guys had never seen it, but this is the other side of the uh, the area, okay? Now, as you can see, we're still in the same kind of place and stuff, um, and there are more powerful Digimon here. I mean, we've got a couple of Hagurumon waiting about and stuff. I don't know how far we're going to venture into this place, but I thought I would just kind of show you guys some stuff in here before we wrap up because, again, we have our uh, Mega Digimon and we have an EXE Digivolution available to us, so if we get in a battle here, we won't have to worry about it too much. Now, I'm going to try and avoid battles for now so that we can continue exploring and try and keep the try and keep things as smooth as possible here but I thought I would dart around and pick up some of the resources in this area as well because there are some valuable stuff to be acquired here obviously as well behind the Hagurumon there is obviously an orange war Growmon sitting waiting and he will be an extremely tough fight okay so if we get in a, a battle with him we have to kind of be careful he will probably give us really good stats though which is something to kind of consider all right we are going to basically oh my god another one okay interesting what are you giving us Digi Onyx. Hmm. I don't know if we need that for anything in particular, but it will probably come in handy, so I'm just going to grab all of it. We're going to try and sneak past this guy. 
um, because there's something in the next area that I want to do, and I don't know if you're... Are you even going to aggro us? No, you're just chilling. All right, excellent. Now, this next area might be um, a little bit different because this is the control island part of Fault X Machina. This is where a lot of the uh, terrain changing stuff is going to go down. Now, if I can, I would love to dodge past these guys. If we were to fight one, we would be okay. I don't think we'd die or anything like that, but these guys are a little bit stronger. I think they're two levels higher than the one in the last area, and it looks like he is going to run at us. So if we could just avoid him and get to the control room, that would be fantastic. I don't think I have to take as wide a berth as I'm doing when I play through this area, guys. Like, I am going way out of my way to try and avoid contact with these guys. But it's just because I don't want to... Um, if I got in a battle when I was not playing with you guys, then it wouldn't be a problem. Because I would just, you know, fight the battle or we would escape the battle or whatever. But I'm trying to keep things, as I said, as smooth as I can. Wow. That was... I'm glad I came around here. Normally, I wouldn't bother with this kind of shit. But check this out, guys. We've got a deluxe mushroom here. I don't know if we've had one of those in the playthrough just yet. We found... Um, celebratory Nicanos and all that shit, but I, I don't know. But anyways, the main reason we came here was to uh, was to peek inside this building here. So that's exactly what we are going to do just now. Because inside here we have Hagurumon, who actually is the Hagurumon that Gardramon requires. So I thought we would just tie this up while we're here. This is the control room. Very nice. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks for that show. So it's a one room. Um, you didn't. Okay, whatever. This co room controls Ex Machina's land floating system. Right now, the land floating system is in standard mode. No need to adjust um, the topography right now, I guess. What do you want with me? Please give us the Hagurumon gear. And, he's, and we basically tell him all about Gargemon. He gives us the gear. Um, Next machine of control uh, has been rest. I'll lower the bridges to the Path Fork Island, Control Island, and the Flower Bed Island. Um, and that is that process done. Sorry, it actually came up and told us exactly what it did there, guys. So uh, I apologize. But we also get Hagurumon to join the city too. Now, I think what we will do is continue to... Um, now, we now manage the land floating system. All right, that's all he's going to say. I was going to say we could port back to the city. Um, but I think what we could try and do is also just navigate past, in fact. Now that I think of it. All right, okay, I'll show you, I'll show you guys my thought process here. So... What I was thinking was, let's actually run through through the now connected gate and... Oh god, can you just... No, 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 no. Not like this. Not, never like this. Okay. So we should be able to outrun this dude without too much hassle. Um, whew. So my thought was, let's let's just walk through this area that now connects us and get to Gardmon, right? Check this out, guys. Luke is waiting for us in here. A couple of things. In fact, there's a lot of things to pay attention to. So maybe this is a bad time at the end of the episode, but... First of all, we have a Metal Gururumon on our left, we have a um, Blue Metal Greymon random wandering, and we also have a couple of other things going on. We've got a couple more connecting paths, but again, looks like the, the bridges haven't been raised or the roads haven't been raised yet, so they we can't access them. We also have a, god I forgot the name of you my friend, over there um, standing, he's obviously an interactable Digimon. Let's feed our guys real quick. And then we'll try and get through to Gargamon after we interact with a couple of these guys. And then that'll probably be us. Now, I don't actually don't have a lot of food left. So this is kind of painful. I've never not fed Digimon at this point in the series yet. But we have completely run out of food. Um, okay, interesting. I'm not one for care mistakes. So why don't we just... Um, why don't we just hot tail this straight through the middle? I'm hoping that Metal Greymon gives us a break here. Um, no, not... Well, that wasn't part of the plan. All right, looks like we're going to be fighting this, um, these little, uh, what is this, Agamon Black? I'm pretty sure. Not, not part of the plan, guys. But if we need to extend things, we're going to obviously do that. I was trying to dart through the middle, um, to try and get past the Metal Greymon. This wasn't the best route I could have taken, but it was definitely the fastest. So I, um, kind of tossed a coin there to try and get a high risk, high reward kind of, like escape. Now it looks like. Our uh, Crusadermon on the left here is taking more pain than I expected from these little dudes. So we are we will be keeping an eye on this fight. I'm gonna toss out a couple of medium recoveries just to keep us in the in the um keep us afloat basically. In fact, what I'll do is I'll finish one of these guys off with our limit break. Hopefully this hits the one on the right. I'm thinking that it is based on the way that Crusadermon is facing. So I'm not gonna like redirect him or anything before we use this. Now what I'm gonna do is now that he's out of the picture, I'm gonna make sure that Crusadermon and um, when I find the right button, it's going to defend. And then I'm going to basically find my recovery items and throw a large recovery at him. Now, you might think, Jack, why waste large recoveries? Well, it's simply because I don't want to click the menu button a bunch of times um, and then have to, you know, like, do that for you guys. Although, in saying that, Grudemon is now taking a pound in it as well. 
I'm going to use my ultimate, but there is a strong possibility that Garurumon might get injured here, which would be a pain in the ass, but also not the end of the world. Okay, that should be this fight over and done with. We're going to see how much money... Oh god, this guy's hanging in there. Okay, epic. Kudos to this little bastard. He is level 38, guys, so even though he is a rookie, we have to kind of pay attention and respect that. Luckily, we got our recovery item off um, just before the fight ended anyway, but... Okay, so we get 1600 bits, which is okay. I doubt that's going to make up for the uh, resources we spent in this fight. But anyways, let's try and uh, run past this. Uh, no, for the love of God, why? Why are you doing this? All right, so if you could just relax, I'm going to try and get to... So we've got our Rapidmon is the name of this Digimon here. We're not going to talk to him just now because we have other important things to be doing. First of all, and once we go in here, we should be connected through to the Gardramon that we met earlier on in this episode. So yeah, that was a bit stressful, a bit um, messy. Oh god. Well, I did not expect to meet you grunting in my face right there, but hello. So luckily the Gardramon in this area that I've now spawned, because again, Rika has, um, she's not in this area anymore. The the Digimon that are naturally here and are normally running about randomly are back. So that's what happened there. Anyways, Gardramon, you brought the gear back. We hand it over. I think that's going to fix him. I can finally walk again. Thank you very much. Blah, blah, blah. Obviously, he's going to join the city, which is great. Now, what we're going to do is, before these guys stop being hungry, we are going to instantly autopilot back and hightail it out of here. And, uh, yeah, back to Digimon's house. Now, there will be a lot of dialogue going on here, guys. So, what I am probably going to do is uh, wrap up the episode here with Digimon. And when we come back at the start of the next episode, we will find out all the shenanigans that is going on with the progression of the story and all that other good stuff. So we did quite a lot today. Um, it was not a long episode by any means, but we uh, we done a bunch of shit and, well, we progressed with Rika and Hamari. They made a massive development. She's now in her mega form, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how that's... Is that an ultimate digital? I can't even fucking remember. It's been so long since I've seen this shit. But anyways, Kota has went in the opposite direction. He had all his problems and stuff. So we sorted all that jazz as well. It looks actually in the background, based on what I can see just now on my screen, that um, Miri is actually turned back up in Digimon Shed. So um, yeah, looks like we'll be talking to her as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing Faulty X Machina. Again, some of you guys may have seen it before, but at the same time, for those of you who have not gotten to this part of the game before, or you're seeing this for the first time, then... That is, um, that's Fault X Machina. There will be a lot more in that area that we need to do. There's obviously Digimon there, and there's no new parts that we haven't yet seen, which is very exciting, but we'll get back to that in due course anyway. So, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. I will see you tomorrow. So, yep, until then, have a nice day. Have a great day, whatever you're doing, whatever you're getting up to. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you then. Bye-bye, guys. Peace out.